welcome everybody. Uh, so today we only have a morning session and uh, uh, the last speaker of our workshop is Tamash Hausel. So he will be speaking on very stable Higgs bundles, equivariant multiplicity and mirror symmetry. So I'll be now muting myself and uh, giving the floor to Tamash. Okay, so thanks very much uh, for the invitation. Just like others, I really enjoying this uh, conference. I, it's definitely the first conference I am enjoying since online. Uh, but in fact, uh, it's probably, I don't remember, maybe in grad school when I were so excited about other people's talks and uh, what we discovered uh, with, uh, for example, with uh, Vladimir and also with Gukov that somehow uh, maybe these affine Grassmannians uh, play a role in all of our works. In fact, um, um, Sergei is already suggesting to have a reading seminar uh, on this subject, so it's already exciting. Um, yes, so let me then, so I'm going to talk about this um, joint project with Nigel Hitchin. Um, I just took the title of the talk, the title of the preprint. Um, and, and partly because of um, um, the, the, the urge to try to explain to you this uh, potential relationship to these other people's uh, work uh, talks in this um, conference, um, I decided to be slightly unusual. Um, instead of talking about the paper, uh, which um, you could have read already anyway, and it's pretty much self-contained, so um, there isn't much to add to that. But I will give in the first part will be a pre-talk, so it's pre-paper, um, the, the things which are not discussed in the paper, but um, the ideas um, are needed to, to understand what's going on. And I will give a post uh, paper in the second talk, which will be uh, this conjecture, which actually in the last week of, um, of the paper, three weeks ago or something, before we put it on the archive, we realized that all these simple things we were doing seemed to fit into a much bigger framework, which I find very exciting. And so in the second part, I will talk about the paper in the light of trying to formulate this um, bigger picture at the end. So that, that's the plan. Um, so let me then start with, first of all, I wanted also to give a motivation for this conference uh, because, and it actually relates to other, uh, other talks in the same conference. So it's extremely um, interesting to see all these relations with all these other uh, talks here. So let me just say um, a, a little motivation for this conference. Why would you want to perhaps be interested in, um, in, in, um, in these kind of questions which we'll discuss uh, today for this conference. So this originates in a joint work with Andras. So with Sunesh, uh, we have some unpublished um, um, work. Uh, uh, we have a T deformed we study a, or construct combinatorially a T deformed field in the algebra. Combinatorially described. Which conjecturally, at least in our work, it's conjecturally describes um, the say the, the TQFT, which is behind is um, um, T deformed fell in the formulas, but just to be more simple, the T fell in the formulas. Usually you can call it Q, but I will use T for the equivariant parameter. So I will have just T, T fell in the formulas. That's for, okay, I just write down something. These kind of equivariant indices of line bundles on the moduli space of Higgs bundle. So I just write something down. Um, so we take the moduli space of G Higgs bundles, we take, um, say a generator of the 
Picard group ample generator, take it on the level K and take this infinite dimensional vector space of sections of this. And then we have a C star action on the X moduli space and uh, decompose this space according to the weights of that C star action. So the weight I component here is going to be finite dimensional. And then we can measure the size, the dimension of that and uh, remember this by putting this t to the minus i here. You will see the <coughs> only non-positive weight. So that's why I have this t to the minus i. So that everything is in, in powers of t, positive powers of t. Okay, so that's, that's the motivation for me to try to um, 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 produce some geometry, hopefully, which might help us understand this, 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 this combinatorial world. Um, so these things match completely what other people in the area are working on, and they manage to reduce every computation to uh, Woodward and Telemann, but I would like to um, understand this in, in my world, this computation. So, and in particular, I would like to see um, a, a Higgs bundle um, understanding of, um, of, of these formulas. So that's the um, motivation. So maybe I just say this uh, as a problem is uh, maybe we can try to find geometric structures on the K theory, equivariant K theory of the moduli space of Higgs bundles. And I will show you that doing this circle of ideas about mirror symmetry, we will eventually get some very uh, non-trivial symmetries, for example, on this, which actually by now I see the combinatorics it's leading to surprisingly to me is the same kind of combinatorics what we had discovered um, by basically looking at formula, formulas, not nothing conceptual. Okay, so what I do in the first part, as I said, I give the pre-talk, I will um, tell you the, the ideas from mirror symmetry that we are exporting to uh, the study of the moduli space of Higgs bundles. So that's uh, going to be the first um, chapter or section. It will be, um, I, I say schematic because it will not be mathematically really well defined the things I will say, but uh, you should think of these things as, as, as some schemes uh, of thinking uh, which, which motivates what we will be actually doing. And actually the part of the problem is that things probably should be done on the stack of Higgs bundles and we are interested, I, I study spaces and um, smooth varieties in particular. So you, one has to be careful. Okay, so let me just uh, a quick recall about um, these um, three main aspects or three aspects of mirror symmetry, usual mirror symmetry for Calabiao, say three folds, Calabiao's. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, very just, this is just to remind everyone. So we have a Calabiao threefold, um, which is a smooth projective variety with uh, which is say simply connected and uh, the canonical class is trivial. Okay, so this one, this thing has uh, three structures, uh, differential geometry structures, which is relevant here. You have a complex structure and you have a killer structure, omega x, which is a symplectic um, two form. Then the physicists tell us that told us in the first place that uh, to any Calabio threefold, roughly speaking, you should have a mirror Calabio threefold. So there should be a Calabio threefold, the so called mirror, the mirror. And um, yes, and so this one has the similar structures, the complex structure and the symplectic structure. And then the physicists in the first place 
in their work, uh, they saw that um, uh, these Calabians should come in pairs. So the two physical theories you attach to one, uh, to so to one and to the other, they are different physical theories. Somehow they should match. So the A model, what something in physics of uh, the symplectic uh, manifold x omega x should match in some sense the B model of the mirror, which um, is something only. Uh, seeing the complex geometry of oh, why, why. Okay, so mathematically is just uh, the symplectic geometry of um, of X and the uh, complex geometry of Y. So that's why it's exciting because uh, traditionally algebraic geometry study the complex geometry and symplectic geometry is uh, basically I would still call an emerging field, but actually mainly uh, motivated by this mirror symmetry. Because of this, we have a lot of expectations. Because of these mirror symmetric conjectures, we have a lot of expectation about the symplectic geometry of um, Calabi-Aus, which are reflecting it in the algebraic geometry of the mirror. Okay. So there are three aspects of mirror symmetry, which is going to be relevant for us. So the first one is, um, is the simplest. And it was, I think, the first which actually must have caught the mathematician's eyes, because it said that on a topological level, in the, you have this, that the proposed Calabi-Aus, the, how, the way how the physicist in the beginning just proposed some like the Quintic and the, the Fermat quintic and, and its mirror, which is uh, some more before quotient of the Fermat quintic, and then, or, or a resolution of that topology for the mirror symmetry. And it said this very weird relationship between the two Hodge diamonds, namely that the one of the Hodge diamond was reflected uh, along an unusual axis to get the Hodge numbers of the mirror. So it's, it is a very surprising pairing that uh, of, of spaces because the topology is completely flipped. Um, okay, so then it was the first, and this is only up to Hodge numbers. So nothing deeper uh, geometrically yet. It's basically just a Hodge theory. But then uh, came um, um, Konsevich in um, 1994, and then he introduced the idea of uh, homological mirror symmetry, which should be pretty much the, um, the categorical meaning of, of this um, mirror symmetry from, for the physicists. So it says that um, two categories attached to the symplectic manifold and, and to its mirror complex manifold should should um, be uh, identified by mirror symmetry. So it should be some sort of Foucault category of the symplectic uh, manifold X it should be equivalent with the derived category of coherent sheets on the on the mirror. So uh, we will be mostly thinking about objects. So here, objects are things like Lagrangian submanifolds uh, together with some um, sub, sub uh, manifolds together with some local systems. And here you have um, complexes of coherent sheaves. Anyway, so that's already exciting because it gives you a mathematical framework of uh, really trying to match the objects on the two sides. And then the last one, which also historically was the last one in 1996, came a proposal by Strominger, Yao, and Zaslo, because by this time it was only basically sporadic pairs of examples, or maybe there was the Batirem uh, Borisov construction, which was more in things done in family, but some particular families of Calabiaus were only understood what their mirror should be. So Strominger Yauzaslo proposed them a geometrical construction of the mirror based on, on a given one. 
So this is the Strominian Yao Zaslo. This is not entirely um, well defined either, but generically you expect that uh, any Calabial threefold fiber over a three dimensional space, which is a three ball with the generic fibers, uh, which are special Lagrangian tori. And then you dualize those tori and then you should somehow fill in the singular fibers with some singular fibers and you should get the mirror Calabial. So, so the takeaway here is that you should have two vibrations to the same base from the two mirror, the, for, the, for, for the mirror pair of Calabial so that generically you have a special Lagrangian dual tori. Tori as generic fibers. So even today, even though this one has been uh, extremely advanced by the gross uh, Zeeberg prog program, but it's still not completed. So I think we will sooner than later, we will actually get a complete proof that this can actually be done in a precise way. But still today, I think it's not completely uh, done yet. Okay, but these are the three things. Um, and let me show you how um, these uh, then were noticed that this kind of mirror symmetry phenomena should be, um, um, should be there for the geometry of the moduli space of Higgs bundles. So that's the next uh, discussion. 1.2. Mirror symmetry uh, for Higgs bundles. Okay, so the setup um, again is slightly going to be sketchy. So it we will work on a Riemann surface, um, a complex smooth projective uh, curve, projective. Uh, I will use algebraic geometry language actually in the whole talk, but I will make a point at some point to see to say that things actually should have a completely parallel um, story in the language of differential geometry, which actually is much better for, for the relationship to physics. So the setup is this, we have this Riemann surface of some genus um, G we usually assume bigger than one. And um, we take a complex reductive group. Again, for differential geometers, it's just the complexification of a compact group, compact Lie group. And these things uh, come in pairs, this uh, complex reductive group by their uh, characterization with root, root datum. There is a dual root datum, which will correspond to a um, dual group, it's so-called Lagrange dual group. And uh, I will just mention basically two different examples of this today. So GLN is self-dual and um, SLN is a mirror to PGLN formally, but it's the same for over the complex numbers as PSLN. Okay, um, and now let me um, show you how the, this mirror symmetry first showed up in, in, our, in our studies of the geometry of the Higgs moduli space. So in order to understand this first step, you have to talk about Higgs bundle. So let me just uh, define the moduli space of G Higgs bundle, not define, just to say uh, that we will look at the moduli space of uh, Moduli of uh, usually I look at the semi simple X bundles, but as I say, probably the right thing to look at is the whole stack of G X bundles, but I would rather not uh, talk about that. So I just say moduli space of the G X bundles. Okay, you should think of a Higgs bundle is a pair of um, principal G bundle 
and the sum auxiliary Higgs field, which is a, a section of the adjoint bundle uh, with coefficients in the canonical bundle of the curve. So that's an object, but then you have to study them and somehow you have to build a space out of them. That's the moduli space of Higgs bundles. So the beautiful thing about them is that they um, come equipped with them. First of all, they have a holomorphic symplectic structure, an algebraic symplectic structure. And with respect to that, you have a um, algebraically completely integrable Hamiltonian system, the so-called Hitchin system. It's some sort of characteristic polynomial you take of the Higgs field and that gives you this map. So this is the Hitchin map uh, to an affine space. And so AG is the Hitchin base. I will be more precise for GLN in the second part. So this is a completely integrable Hamiltonian system. Um, and the generic fibers, it's also turns out to be proper, and the generic fibers are abelian varieties. So they are this tori that um, also show up for them, this Strominger-Yosaslo picture. But they are uh, complex Lagrangian tori, not special Lagrangian, and that's part of the reason that uh, we uh, found uh, the same tori in a different complex structure which we're making them special Lagrangian. So instead of the Higgs moduli space in this, this original story, you actually look at the same space with a different complex structure, the so-called moduli space of uh, flat holomorphic uh, G connections on C. So this is somehow, in some sense, the complexification of your, the character variety many people look at here, the moduli space of unitary, uh, connect, flat unitary connections. Um, yes, but uh, this is non-compact. Um, and so that will make all the difference uh, by, by the difficulty of studying it. Then, um, Okay, the non-abelian Hodge theorem, which uh, identifies this uh, space of flat connections in a canonical way, as a, with a, up to a diffeomorphism uh, with the moduli space of Higgs bundles. And in fact, one can think of uh, this uh, non-abelian Hodge theorem as, uh, as explaining the hyperkiller geometry of the moduli space of Higgs bundles. So maybe that's important. So I will say this, that, so they can be considered two of the complex structures. Structures of um, somehow an ambient hyperkiller manifold, which sometimes can be called the Hitchin moduli space, the solutions to Hitchin cell duality equation on the Riemann surface. Um, so it's a hyperkiller manifold, it has a, family of complex structures uh, uh, parametrized by S2, and we just usually write three of them, I, J, and K, and uh, each of them will have a um, corresponding killer form. And so this is the hyperkiller structure. We have that usually we think of the complex structure I is uh, the Higgs moduli space, what that's what it represents, and the complex structure J, and in fact, all the other complex structure except the the conjugate um, of I will be all isomorphic with um, the own. Okay, so then let me uh, now tell you the three aspects of mirror symmetry, how they show up for, for Higgs bundles. So they will show up for Higgs bundles for Leglen's dual groups. So the first one was, is the, in fact, we, we are going to go backwards, so it will be, the Strominger Yaw picture can be seen for um, M the Ram um, G and uh, oops, thank you. M the Ram G, uh, M the Ram um, G L. Um, okay, so what does it mean? It means that if you take the Hitchin map, 
which was a map on the Higgs moduli space side, but it's the same manifold, so I can look at it over the flat connection moduli space. Is um, going to go to the Hitchin base, so it's the Hitchin map, and um, you have um, the mirror Hitchin map because the Hitchin base is agree for the Langlands dual group and, and G, and you have the mirror um, Hitchin moduli space there. And it turns out that these uh, vibrations have the formal differential geometric properties as in Strominger of Zaslow, so such that generic fibers, fibers are dual special Lagrangian and special Lagrangian. With respect to the, with respect to omega j, the complex, the symplectic structure omega j. May I, may I ask? Sure. Uh, I cannot hear. Sorry, I cannot hear. Yeah, I don't quite know who but, wanted to ask a question, but then uh, who? Nikita. Nikita. Yeah, maybe because he is possibly on a train, it was not so easy. But when uh, when he's able to join, then uh, then he can ask a question. Okay. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the starting of this mirror symmetry story. But you are given to uh, naturally dual special Lagrangian vibrations generically, and uh, then you can start to fantasize if if this is uh, you can get the same story for mirror symmetry as for Calabi-L threefold. So these things are of course not compact, uh, but they are calabi because they are hyperkiller. So, so most of the differential geometrical constructions apply. So the first uh, thing, Thomas? yes. Uh, so, sorry, I have a short question. So I, okay, maybe wrongly, but I understood from your previous description that SYZ is probably the strongest form of mirror symmetry. Now, now if you say there is already SYZ for those modular spaces, then how is it all the other forms they would follow or not at all? Right, so the SYZ in the strongest form is not well formulated by the physicists. So this actually for them somehow talk about the singular fibers as well. So it's a riskier thing to talk about things there. But but yes, in philosophically, that's true. So therefore you are right. So we are given the strongest form, the rest should follow. But uh, we have this caveat that uh, it's not well formulated mathematically. By now, as I say, we are much closer than we were 25 years ago in mathematically to understand what is really Strominger of Zaslow proposal. And uh, yes, so in principle, it's there. So there is nothing else we need. Uh, we should say that these are mirror symmetric and all the others should follow from this. But again, you will see that the others are not completely understood yet either, the, the consequences. So for example, uh, the easiest uh, was then to fantasize that there should be topological mirror symmetry. And this one was the easiest and uh, this one has a happy ending. So I will mention this here. So we had to set up a pair of um, objects which were different um, to, to compare. And we managed only to ag find agreement of the Hodge diamonds in this case, and, and but it was not trivial to set it up. So I, I don't really go into details, just to say that um, the conjecture with uh, Tadeusz, Tadeusz in, uh, it was roughly around 2012, that for SLN and PGLN, um, the, the Hodge numbers agree, the Hodge numbers of um, the, 
the SLN uh, space sees agree with the mirror, the, the Laplace zero one Hodge numbers of uh, MDR PGLN. And then what we proved in the paper is that it's the same as the, the Hodge numbers are the same for the Higgs bundles as for the, um, as for the um, flat connections. So in fact, you can ask the same problem about Higgs bundles. And this is the thing that uh, then has a good, uh, nice ending. So it was not trivial. We did computations for SL2 and SL3, which uh, showed this um, agreement, which we managed to uh, write up, worked. And, but it was only until very recently when uh, this uh, work we already heard about in the first uh, talk of Grishenik and Dimitri. And uh, so two of them were my students and then Ziegler uh, uh, combined their expertise to prove this. So this was proved using, uh, uh, using periodic integration. So that was as another technique which was not at all expected to, to work in this case. So that was exciting and, and it was even nicer because then they could uh, uh, continue their work and show um, that it actually implies their technique implies in a, I would say in a much simpler technically, perhaps simpler way and goes cohomological, cohomological fundamental lemma. which was very satisfactory because these ideas coming from physics led to a new proof of uh, something uh, fundamental in the Leglatz program. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's great. So that's, that's really a nice and completed story. And uh, so in order to do something more still interesting, we can still look at homological mirror symmetry. And uh, I mean, the best source to read about uh, this, how you think of um, homological mirror symmetry in the case of Higgs bundles probably is by, by the physicists Kapustin and Witten. Um, in, uh... So there is a question I see. Let me see the question. Okay, let me read. And that's Nikita's question. My question is about the complex structure J corresponding to MDRAM. This is something that I never quite understood. How is the complex structure J chosen? I'm confused because looking at the full sphere of complex structures, there are two special points. So again, the, what I was trying to uh, allude to is that, um, so there are on this sphere, there are two special complex structures, I, and it's conjugate. So they both belong to the moduli space of Higgs bundles and the remaining ones, the complex structures, you get the obtained, so obtained complex manifolds are holomorphically isomorphic. So in other complex structures besides I and I conjugate, the hyperkiller metric gives you the same a holomorphic structure, namely the holomorphic structure of the moduli space of flat connections. So we just pick J because it's, uh, we could have picked K or anything else. So Kapustin Witten 2006 it was a big, big uh, push in this story. Uh, it's an amazing 200 pages thing. Um, what they did was to use uh, phys their physics ideas to, to deduce the geometric Legland's correspondence, which for, for our perspectives is an um, aspect of the homological mirror symmetry uh, conjecture for this, uh, this setup for the moduli space of Higgs bundles. So, uh, so roughly speaking, I mean, okay, they are physicists, so they wouldn't write anything like this, but that's how I think about this, is that if you take the Fukuya category of um, one of these uh, spaces, in the, for the, yes, uh, for the symplectic structure omega j, then this should be 
equivalent with the, um, the B model, the objects, the moduli space, the, the, the cat, derived category of coherent sheaves on, on the mirror. Omega. Oh, this is with respect to complex structure J. Okay, so that's, um, okay, again, mathematically, it's uh, ill-defined in many ways. I mean, the Foucault category, again, is part of the stories that it's still being developed to, the, to, to complete the homological mirror symmetry uh, formalism. The right-hand side is, is more or less okay, but again, actually it turns out that you have to do some things, some complicated things at the singular points of the moduli spaces again. So, so it's not, it's, it's really, you have to take this with a lot of um, salt, this statement. Uh, but it gives you, it should give you the right, right frame, fr framework to, to think about. And in fact, I am even going to do an even more simplification at first, but then it turns out it's pretty much part of the picture. And this one was first discussed in the paper of uh, Donaghi and Pantel, which appeared then in 2012. And uh, they talked about that uh, this uh, mirror symmetry should have what they call the classical limit. I will still use the same letter, um, which should be um, that both sides degenerating to uh, something uh, simpler. And, uh, and it turns out that they both degenerate to very similar things. One is the module, the, the derived category of current sheets on now on the Higgs moduli space for G. And uh, the other one is the same, the derived category of current sheets, but now on the mirror, on the mirror sign for Leglands Yol group G. And what they have established, and that was also part of the and the, all the constructions in um, geometric legends is that generically, this is a Fourier Mukai transform, Mukai transform, Fourier Mukai transform for, um, for the, the dual abelian varieties which appear in the generic point. So that's why we are talking about generically, and but fully Mukai transform, we understand um, quite well. So let me, for example, write out therefore two expectations which can be extended over the singular locus. So the difficulty with, uh, for example, this uh, classical limit is that we really only know how this works on the generic fibers of the Hitchin map. And then as actually similarly to Shomigiri Ozaslo, you have to try to get information what happens if you go into the singular fibers. But I tell you two expectations which come from the generic behavior, which will have a natural way to extend into the singular part. So this again is just- How much? Yes. Sorry. Like uh, maybe I, I I got I got a bit confused. So before uh, you were saying like this Kapustin Witten that uh, this uh, this kind of mirror symmetry should re relate Fukaya on one moduli space to coherent shifts on the other, and now Dunagi Pontiff relates actually coherent shifts on two dual uh, moduli spaces. Uh, may, 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 could you could you repeat how the two things uh, tie together? So the, the, if the, you can degenerate both the Foucault category to the of the MDRAM, so it's a different one. In both cases, we change the space from the flat connection to the Higgs one, and both of them on the original mirror symmetry degenerates. There is a, some family of categories, and then it's the special fiber is going to be the uh, the one here. That's one way to see that. But in a moment, you will see that it's actually the way how the physicists think about this, at least in my mind, it's part of the same mirror symmetry because physicists will somehow have a, an even more um, refined uh, way of thinking about these categories, but those are not mathematically well-defined. They will look at um, 
brain. So a brain is one of these objects, either an A brain or a B brain, depending on you are in the Foucault category in the current chief side. And they will think about brains, which in this hyper killer setting, which behaves perhaps differently in the different complex structures. And that extension, I, I will mention it in a moment. And then you will see again um, that it's part of this extended version of mirror symmetry that on the Higgs uh, complex structure is just um, just this, what Donaghi and Pante are talking about. But for originally for them, it was a degeneration argument. And then I haven't said it, but Kapustin and Witten go on and then they identify these categories in the there, which are exactly the ones which appear in, in the geometric lens, which is a further other things I don't want to talk about. But, okay. Uh, so, so there are two things then we can, which follow from formal things about the Fourier Mukai transform. The first one is that we know very well what's the uh, Fourier transform of, um, um, of the Dirac delta at the origin is. It should be the constant function one on the dual one. So this one can be extended to the statement that the mirror of, um, say, the structure sheaf of the uh, Higgs moduli space for the Lagrange dual group. So that's one sheaf which we uh, know. That's actually the first sheet which you want to think about. The mirror of that should be the generically the structure sheaf at the origin of the abelian variety, which they then form, in fact, something which will be crucial for us too, the so-called Hitchin section, which is a canonical section of the Hitchin map collecting at the generic fibers, the identity element of those tori. And then it has an obvious extension, this um, observation generically, that you expect that the structure shift should be mirror to the structure shift of the Hitchin section. So this is the Hitchin section, this W zero omega, but in this will be clear in the notation in the second part where, this, where does this notation come from. So that's one expectation. And the other one, um, which is slightly more um, subtle, is that uh, we can test some part of the uh, mirror symmetry conjecture for any f in, uh, in uh, coherent chief on or Higgs moduli space, mg. But we, we don't really know what to do, what should be the mirror uh, globally, we know that generically, and the generic fiber it should be the Fourier Mukai transform of the sheaf restricted to the generic fiber HMF. But we generically don't know how this extends. But one thing we know, again, this follows from formal properties of uh, uh, the Fourier Mukai transform, which we can extend it globally, that the mirror on the dual Hitchin section, which I denote like this when you restrict it to the mirror dual each in section, this should be isomorphic with just the push forward by the original Hitchin map of the sheaf F. Because it's a Hitchin section, there is an isomorphism between a, this and AG because this uh, push forward lives there. So again, this is a formal property coming from the Fourier Mukai transform. And this is what we will be making a lot of headway with, because now this thing makes sense over uh, not just the generic locus, but over say, over the nilpotent cone, over the zero origin of the Hitchin base or, or the origin of the Hitchin section. So you will see in a moment, I will write down um, that. And, but before that, now I made this comment that um, more generally, uh, Kapustin Witten um, look at uh, these brains, uh, which are hyper killer brains in, in they behave differently in the com three complex structures. So we have the so-called uh, BAA brains. So these are some sort of objects. Mathematically, it's not quite well defined that where we are trying to make sense of them. But it's some sort of object, which in the complex structure I, which is the first one, the Higgs moduli space complex structure, it looks like a coherent sheaf. And in the other uh, complex structures, it looks like a Lagrangian um, sub variety on M Hitchin. Yeah, now I write the hyperkiller thing. 
So BAA brains, um, we should be going to be the same as um, should should be in the by the mirror symmetry should be mirror to BBB brains on the mirror on the mirror hyperkiller manifold. Okay, so again, the BBB brain now is a sort of object which is this kind of triholomorphic object. We basically, we only understand it for vector bundles. We are thinking about a mathematically triholomorphic or a hyperholomorphic vector bundle, which is a vector bundle with some special connection on it, which will make it uh, holomorphic in all the complex structures, hyperholomorphic vector bundle. Another way to think about this, which I prefer, is to think of a vector bundle on the twist or space of the hyperkiller metric, which has a canonical complex structure and with respect to that non-algebraic, but that complex structure, you just look at the holomorphic vector bundle on the twist or space. That's roughly speaking a hyperkiller, high hyperholomorphic vector bundle. And here a BAA brain, then, then you have a very nice choice, namely you can take holomorphic um, Lagrangians uh, in, in the Higgs moduli space complex structures, because there is this holomorphic uh, um, or a morphic uh, symplectic form, which you can put together from, from the two, uh, the omega j times omega k. Okay, and holomorphic Lagrangians um, are abundant. We have all kinds of holomorphic Lagrangians on the Higgs moduli space. And then the big question is, where are these? What's the mirror? What are the these hyperholomorphic vector bundles or whatever extensions you have to make. And they, actually that's, I think, one of Nigel's interest in this project because hyperholomorphic vector bundles are very non-trivial differential geometric objects. They solve some analog of um, basically like a hyperkiller metric, that sort of rigidity they have in my mind. So they are surprisingly hard to find but because of this proposal, any Lagrangian, and as I say, you have Lagrangians everywhere, sh should have some sort of hyperholomorphic mirror, according to the physicist. And by the way, here, you see that the first letter in both of the cases is B. That means that this kind of extended mirror symmetry in the moduli space of Higgs bundle complex structure is fixes B. So it's actually between the derived category of current sheets on the Higgs moduli space. Okay, so soon I will be able to formulate the, the thing which I will uh, want to make sense or which I really think is exciting and, um, and that will be ending the first part of this talk. So Kapustin and Witten do even more. I mean, this is already a lot extra things uh, they add, but if there is this uh, much bigger symmetry they propose to exist in these um, in these dualities, so Kapustin Witten actually constructs or uh, yeah a, a uh, proposes a, a big big symmetry group on on all these categories, and that um, is going to be the Hecke algebra. Actually, the same spherical Hecke algebra, which appeared in uh, Vladimir's talk. So. I will not talk about the algebra, I just uh, roughly mention, formal, formalize, uh, just the just notation introduced for certain operators, uh, certain hacky operators to start with. So the setup will be this, so we will take a dominant weight of the Legland's dual group, which is basically a highest weight, an irreducible representation, it labels. We fix a point in the curve. And, and to this data, one can construct a Hecke operator, which will act by Hecke transformations on, say, on the derived category of coherent sheets on the Higgs moduli space. So, and they actually will form this spherical Hecke algebra when you put them together. So they call them Taft operators, but for us, this is just Hecke operators or Hecke transformations. And then they say that the mirror symmetry we have intertwines this action with some action on the mirror, and that's done by so-called Wilson operators. So on the mirror, we'll have operators labeled by the same uh, data, 
now irreducible representations of, of our group now because we are in the mirror. So this will act again on the coherent sheets on here, on the for the mirror, the Lagrange dual Higgs moduli space. And this is called the real zone operator. I don't know a mathematical name for this. And, and this is easy, much easier than the Hecker transformations. It is just tensoring with a very nice vector bundle on the Higgs moduli space, namely one takes the universal uh, G Higgs bundle, G L Higgs bundle, restrict, uh, no, evaluate it in our representation, which I denote by rho mu. I told you it's a dominant weight, so there is a corresponding highest weight representation of GL. I take this principal uh, GL bundle, the universal Higgs bundle, and I take it in this representation. This is a vector bundle, and I restrict it to the point C um, of the curve. Now this is a vector bundle on the moduli space of Higgs bundles, and then I can tensor my original coherent sheaf with this, and that's the Wilson operator. And the amazing thing, okay, then you have the same algebras acting on two sides. These are much easier to see what kind of algebras they form because they just form the charactering of, um, of GL will be there, the algebra operators. And, um, and then what the Kapustin and Witten says, that these symmetries intertwine mirror symmetry. So that's, uh, that's an amazing insight because it, it shows a it's, it's a giant symmetry groups on both sides. And this will give us a lot to, to, to think about. So what does it mean? It means that if I first apply mirror symmetry backwards and then conjugate the Hecke transformation, then I should get the, the Wilson operator. And the amazing thing is that if you apply this, I, this conjecture to a simplest uh, possible sheaf you can imagine, and um, namely, so apply this. This is going to be the only thing I will study today in, at the end. I mean, it will not be clear that this is what I'm studying, but this is what I'm going to study. So apply this conjecture to the structure sheaf of the Legrand's dual, oops, of the Legrand's dual. Okay, and then these two formal properties I have de derived. You can check uh, that what I am going to say is a consequence follows from those two properties. Um, it says apply this and plus formal properties. Formal properties of uh, these two formal properties of Fourier Mukai transform and their extension, expected extension to the Higgs moduli space. And you would get the following that if you take the Hitchin section, um, its structure sheaf, you apply the Hecke transformation to it, and then you take the mirror of that. The mirror of this should be very simple. It just should be this vector bundle of the, uh, attached to the universal uh, G Higgs bundle in the representation. Oh, that's not S, this is a row mu of E at the point C. And so this is um, amazing mathematically, at least to me, because I am new to this, but what's on the right hand side, for example, you can restrict it to just a point. This is a vector bundle. Both sides are vector bundles on, on the Hitchin base, which is isomorphic with the Hitchin section. And you can restrict it to the origin. And then you just get an isomorphism of vector spaces. The left-hand side is something which uh, we can study, and this really is non-trivial uh, geometry from the G side. You can take the Hitchin section. You apply the. You can apply the. Um, you can apply the Hecke transformation. Push it forward by the Hitchin map. Uh, you will get. You should get a vector bundle, and this vector bundle should agree with the. With the uh, with this uh, mirror one, and then at the origin, which in this case is the oops, no, here just the origin of the of the um, of the Hitchin base, it should be the same as the, the mirror object, which is this 
representation. It's actually the actual representation of the Lagrange dual group uh, at this point, which is this, uh, we will talk about this, this canonical Higgs bundle, Lagrange dual Higgs bundle at the point C. So it's just a vector space, the fiber of this vector bundle, but this is the representation itself of um, the underlying vector space to the representation of GL. So this is uh, exciting for me because this way, in principle, you can construct the whole representation theory, at least the vector spaces and even some more information on the representation from the G side, you doing Hecke transformation on the, on the Hitchin section. So that's going to be the motivation for the second part. And uh, at the end, I will want to say how this actually will give a new conjecture about, um, about all irreducible characters of GL appearing in the geometry of, um, of these Hitchin sections and then the Hecke transformations, which will actually be just the uh, Lagrangian cells in the Bielanitsky virula of the composition of the Higgs moduli space, which I will talk about in the second part. So that's it. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Um, so I, I already see a question of uh, Nikita. I don't know, it's answered in some way by Camilla, but maybe we still, uh, so, so Thomas, you can read that question and uh, uh, I don't know, say whether you agree with Camilla and then we will see for other questions. So I see first Nikita is asking a question and then I go to Camila. So Nikita is asking why does the origin play such a fundamental role here? What happens to restrictions at other points? So you will see that uh, everything here I'm talking about actually carries a canonical C star uh, action. In the, on the Hitchin base uh, or on the Hitchin uh, section, you will also have a C star action and this will have a single uh, fixed point, and that's the origin. And then what we will get is a C star equivariant vector bundle on these vector spaces. And in fact, it's a theorem, which um, is that uh, every equivariant, C star equivariant vector bundle on a vector space, like this, these uh, Hitchin bases are trivial. So they are just constructed from a C star representation. Uh, on a vector space, and that's the in the over the zero. So the C star representation over the zero is the one which will determine the whole vector bundle. So therefore it's enough to look at over zero. And this statement I am making here, actually it should be T equivariant. And, um, and that's the real thing. And then you have T characters of uh, this C, of C star, this is C star, um, T characters agreeing on both sides. And that's much more than just the dimensions or vector spaces. So that's why the origin plays a, a role, an important role. Then I have Camilla because all the spaces, ah, okay, good. Yeah. But Nikita was writing to me. Yeah. yeah, okay, Camilla is also gives an answer, which is, uh, yeah, yeah. So this will be, yeah, so I can- okay, Thanks. Uh, so Dimitri. Okay. Hi, um, I, so this Hitchin section, I think it technically depends on some choice of, of square root, right? Yeah, right. Uh, we, we will make those uh, choices. They are fixed. We just fix, uh, we actually, in all this story, there is a fixed the theta characteristic. You should think we fix the theta characteristic. But if you just fix a single theta characteristic for simple groups anyway, um, you will get um, canonical Hitchin section because everything comes from the SL2 case. And in the SL2 case, you really just need to fix that theta characteristic. In the GLN case, we are lucky we don't need to make change, uh, choices because we can choose one which is not going to be degree zero and uh, there will be a canonical uh, Higgs band, uniformizing Higgs bundle for GLN. But you are right, yes, uh, we, we, in the general story, we should fix um, a theta characteristic. But that's needed because you have to say what is the identity element of the generic fiber of the Hitchin map. And depending on which theta characteristic you 
choose, you have different choices for the identity. Hmm. I see. Um, okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I have a much more naive question. So you, you told us what is W mu. Could you remind us in, 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 in a couple of words, what, is, uh, what are those HEC operators H mu? <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole excitement to understand what they are. And um, in the second part, I will define H mu for the simplest case when mu is a fundamental representation of GLM. Um, in general, that's the easiest, that's the usual Hecke transformations people might have seen. But the exciting thing is what uh, they construct these, and uh, the Kapustin Witten talk about the, and it's actually mathematicians too. You can do a Hecke transformation uh, attached not just to fundamental. Uh, representations, but to any irreducible representation. And roughly speaking, what you do is that you um, modify your vector bundle only at the point C uh, and somehow in a way which is controlled by that weight. And I, 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 I do it for the fundamental representation and there is really much more interesting and non-trivial in the more general case. And this is crucial for the final conjecture, but um, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Any other questions before the break? So either raise your hand or in the room you can indicate it to me. Uh, well, uh, if not, Tamas, thanks again.